Rio has 30% uh, of its metropolitan area is, is forest. But it's made up of different parks. So this trail interconnects all the parks, thus providing for a, an ecological corridor between the parks. As well as being a recreational asset, it's also a conservation tool. Because otherwise the parks become islands, and islands are not good for conservation because the species only interbreed in a small gene pool. It means that uh, any disease can wipe out an entire population. Within a city like this, real estate is really expensive. So you need to give some value to the tract of land. So only people going to and forth provide enough voter citizen pressure for conserving that uh, narrow strip of land that makes a connection. So if you don't have recreation, you don't have conservation. Anytime that you go into a forest, into nature, there's some element of risk. And it's part of the adventure. You don't want risk, you stay down in the asphalt. So the balance between too much signage and too little signage is, is a very thin line. There is a history that connects the trail to the Olympics. When Rio was bidding for the 2004 Games, we went to Atlanta to present our bid. And I saw this wonderful book, The Appalachian Trail Experience. And I picked it up, I thought, oh, we have a trail like this in Rio. It's just not prepared and people do not know it exists. Two cycles uh, get completed at the same time, because 20 years later, we are having the Olympics here, and the trail is already not a dream anymore, but it, it's here, you can walk it. This is a legacy that we leave for the next generations. Everyone has to leave something behind if you want a better world. This is our part. Every one of us is leaving a better trail, a better environment for the cariocas and the tourists to come.